Hey guys, welcome to my home. I'm Kim. Today I'm so excited because I'm going to be doing a tincture, a garlic tincture. And I'm using this book right here, The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies by Nicole Appleyan. I'm using her book. It's an amazing resource. Uh, she just has so much information packed in here, what they're good for, tinctures, decoctions, salves. I mean, this book is amazing. I'll link it down below. I just, I, I, I refer to it all the time. But garlic, uh, and I've researched other books and the internet as well, and everything comes up about the same. So I do trust this. It's a potent antibiotic, antifungal, and antiparasitic plant. You use garlic to treat infections of all kinds, including colds, flu, sore throats, bronchitis, and intestinal worms. Ew. I just love Like if I walk into a room and I smell garlic and onions, that is like the best smell in the world. Digestive problems. Garlic improves digestion and is useful to relieve excess gas, bloating, and other digestive upsets. Hmm. Lowers blood sugars in diabetics. Guys, that, that's huge. Like we... This is medicine that we can be using ourselves, whether we eat it, use it as a tincture every single day. Uh, we can heal ourselves. Uh, bronchi bronchitis, whooping cough, congestion of all cases or causes, elevated blood cholesterol levels and blood pressure. I'm going to do the tincture. I want to get rid of all the medicine in my cabinets and make tinctures, which are homemade remedies and medicines. Uh, instead of buying ours at the store. I'm going to cut up one cup of garlic cloves. Now it doesn't say uh, if I need to take off the paper. I've seen it both ways. So in this case, I am going to take off all the paper and then I'll uh, add it to my jar. Now it doesn't have to be a mason jar. I prefer these. I have a ton of these like a lot of people do now uh because they're just they're just great for storing and i love to drink out of mason jars i'm just one of those people this one's really fancy it's blue i got it from my uh sister-in-law kelly and i never gave it back <laughs> thanks kelly okay guys so i only used two large heads of garlic for this to get a cup i've already measured it out i'm going to save this one to eat for dinner now i'm just going to just roughly chop my garlic up and that just gives more surface area. Apple cider vinegar, which is what I'm going to add to this to I don't know, suck out the medicinal properties. I don't have the right terminology. You can also use uh, alcohol, which I use vodka for other tinctures. Um, I like using vodka because it lasts like 10 years. So that's a really long time. So you don't always have to be making tinctures and stuff. But for this one, I saw in her book and I also saw on the internet where they use apple cider vinegar. Now I did find one recipe that used vodka, but I figured I'd go with the ones that said apple cider vinegar because there are more of those and there might be a reason for that. I'm new, I don't know. But I'm gonna just trust in what I've read. Chop one cup of garlic cloves fine and allow to rest for 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm gonna wait 10 to 15 minutes. But while I wait, I wanna give you a history on medicine. So I close it up. Now allowed to rest. Night night. I'm going to give you uh, a little history lesson on modern medicine. Now I did my research. Uh, you can do yours, read more into it. But I thought it was very interesting uh, how things have changed in the world. So modern medicine started in about 1913. Now tinctures have or home remedies, homeopathic remedies have been around since the beginning of time, right? Well, modern medicine is more modern, and I know they started doing uh, syringes and stuff, I wanna say in the 1700s, but things have always changed and uh, got more modernized. Our modern me medicine, as we see medicine today with pharmaceutical companies, really started about 1913, and actually really came about more even so with the Rockefeller family. Um, they actually had a lot to do in play with the pharmaceutical companies. I know it's pharmaceutical companies uh, and pharmaceuticals are actually really good in cer certain aspects, but a lot of them do have side effects and that could be seizures, it could be liver damage, it could be heart attack, it could be something really bad that you don't really want to have anything to do with. I don't think aspirin is totally bad. I mean, we take it on occasion, but if you take too much of that, you can become immune to it or it could cause some other kind of side effect. We've just, ne we've just never been big on medicine because I just, I don't know, I just don't like the thoughts of putting something impure in my body. 
medicine in uh, the capsule form or liquid form or just medicine in general kind of just band-aids uh, the problem but when you take a tincture and actually make it from scratch materials and let it ferment it actually cures a lot of ailments what do you want I was gonna go downstairs for a minute. look at him always in my business always <laughs> So tinctures actually became more scarce in 1918 when there was kind of like a witch hunt for people that were using patented drugs. They were basically taken out of medical clinics or medical schools and hospitals at that time. I mean, some of them still, of course, had it for, for a little while, but I think over a course of 15 years, they were dropped and all these pharmaceutical companies started developing and that's what you had to use. You had to use the patented medicines. So tinctures became kind of a... I don't know, a taboo thing at that time. Can I please, can I please make a video? I mean, really. Another weird, uh, weird fact, I guess, is like the hospital switched to patented drugs by the time, by the push of the Rockefeller Foundation. I think it's kind of funny, they're the oil people, but they are also in pharmaceuticals, a lot like some other people that we know too. However, we do have a choice, guys. We have a choice. So we could either do convenience, which is, oh, go pop a pill, it'll take care of it, or kind of mask it, don't really take care of it. We can do convenience with side effects, or we can make our own tinctures and medicine from home with no side effects. So it actually will get down to the root of the problem. This garlic right here, uh, my, my, some of my family members have high blood pressure. Now, I don't want them to get straight off their blood pressure medicine, but with this and eating right and maybe a couple other tinctures, they could. The possibilities are endless, guys. When you make your own medicine, the whole world is open to us if we're willing to take the time to make it. And like you wouldn't just take garlic, I have some other ones I can show you too. These are my tinctures. I love them. My girls helped me make these about three weeks ago. Usually tinctures are anywhere from three to six weeks. More commonly, it's four to six weeks. But I think this one, well, one of the recipes that I read, it said three weeks. And I was like, that doesn't sound right because everywhere else I read is four to six weeks. So I'm gonna go with that on my garlic as well. This is our ginger. And you just shake it like once a day every day for four to six weeks. I'll probably go with the six weeks method. I just like the more time, the more fermenting it's gonna do and I think that's even better. And you don't have to cut the skin off, you just cut it in chunks and it does its thing. And this one is my peppermint. Peppermint is really good for those that have IBS and uh, stomach issues. I'm not one of them. Some of my family members are though. I have a rosemary one. This is turmeric and my daughter Riley actually did this and she's manning the camera as we speak. She got to do this one and first I thought you had to peel them and then after her hands were all yellowed and orange from peeling them, I read where you didn't have to peel them and she was so delighted. All are darkening up really nicely. It's gonna be very potent. And then what's cool is then I'm gonna put in my little droppers that I've shown you in my tincture, getting ready for my tincture video. So let me look these up and I'll tell you what these can do for you. So turmeric is an anti-inflammatory. Uh, it's acute short term for inflammation and it's beneficial and helps signal, signal your body of invading viruses or bacterium. Big words, bacterium. So this helps with chronic inflammation or inflammation at all. Are you back again? I just said I'm about to make some noise out there with a the saw, okay? Make some noise, okay. It helps with arthritis and pain, cancer prevention and treatment, uh, lowers the risk of heart disease, reduces cholesterol levels, promotes wound healing, and the only warning here is it may slow the clotting of blood. So if you have a blood clot issue, do not use turmeric. There's other there's other things you can do. So I couldn't find rosemary in my book. I'm sure it's in here somewhere, but uh, I went to Google and I found the benefits of rosemary are to the brain. Okay, so they help with clarity of thinking, protect and enhance brain function, fighting free radicals in the brain. That's kind of important. Nerve growth factor, crucial to healthy brain and nervous system, which if you just mentioned healthy brain, I'm all in, okay? And I have tons of rosemary. We cook with rosemary. I have like four or five different rosemary plants. I just think rosemary is neat and it can be a hedge. But we're talking about tinctures right now. So rosemary is good for brain function. Very, very important if you want to be, you know, moving around and doing stuff.
Next, I'm going to look up peppermint. Medicinal uses, um, there's a gastronotrius. I don't know, I can't, I can't even say that word. It's gastronotrius. Uh, indigestion, flatulence. Uh, stomach, intestinal, and liver problems is, is what it helps with. The med medicinal uses for it is for all of this. Peppermint leaves and tea are well known as a treatment for indigestion, excess gas, nausea, and other stomach upsets. Riley is dying behind the camera right now. It's okay, Riley. We all got gas. It's good for menstrual cramping. It can be used as an appetite stimulant in its way. Just be aware that it takes time to work and trip you. <laughs> Take good for children who are failing to, tr to thrive due to lack of appetite. Here it comes again. I'm so sorry for the interruptions. So rude. Why? Also good for headaches and migraines. Very, very common among, I think everybody. Oh, Riley, you're gonna love this one. Listen to this, guys. Listen, she's gonna love this one. Diarrhea, spastic colon, irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, and Crohn's disease. So, ginger, aids in digestion, stomach ache, gas, bloating, overeating, poisoning, food poisoning. Uh, it cleanses the liver, aids in immune system, relieves nausea, including pregnancy induced or related. Reduces motion sickness, which is good because uh, my daughter, my youngest one, just in the car sometimes she gets motion sickness. And my husband, when we used to go kayaking, which we haven't done in a while, we need to do. The water would give him motion sickness and I would just laugh and laugh at him. I thought it was funny. <laughs> I'm so rude. Helps fight viruses, which I mean, kind of perfect right now, don't you think? Clears congestion and increases circulation. So lavender. I remember I was kind of, I had this on hand, so I was like, let's do lavender. I was kind of surprised in all of that it does. It's important relaxing herb, having a soothing, re relaxing effect upon the nervous system. So it relaxes you. That's great. Uh, it's anti-anti-anti-anxiety, anti anti uh, antiseptic, anti-spasmodic. What does that mean? Diuretic. Uh, Nervine reduces gas, a sedative, and a stimulant. All good things, all good things. Colds, flu, sore throats, cough, sinus congestion. It helps kill lice. If your kid has lice, it helps. Let me, let me just read this because I wish I would have known about this a couple years ago. If you have boys out there, it's so much easier. You can just shave off their heads and be done. But wait, the, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> in their nets and insects it's like an insect repellent but I have this oh it, it's for urinary tract infections uh, and when you were to retain fluid it helps with that as well lowering blood pressure um, so that is great great stuff so let's move on to our garlic so excited about this oh and I closed the page which is fantastic Fantastic. We have our cup that has been sitting at least 15 minutes, maybe more. The tight fitting lid, cover the garlic with apple cider vinegar, preferably with the mother. <laughs> the mother. <laughs> with the mother. Riley, can you hand me the apple cider vinegar? You can see some of the mother right there. And that is the live culture. And this is like the best apple cider vinegar you can get because it has all the micro symbiotic nutrients, all that, all those scientific terms that I don't really know about. But I know it's really good for you and you can like put a teaspoon of this in your water and drink that and just it alkalizes your body it's just so good for you so this is a uh, Bragg's brand uh, we have cases upon cases of this because we can give it to our chickens in their water as well and our rabbits and even the birds um, it's just so so good and it's organic non GMO uh, and you can see um, it's kind of gross if you look at it because you see all the little the particles floating in there, but that's the good stuff. Okay, I'm going to cover this up and we're going to let this sit for four to six weeks. Okay, just like that. And it's going to do its magic. Uh, isn't that pretty? I just think everything in the glass jar is just so pretty.
It is important to write down when you do something so that you know when you need to take it off. Here, this is where I had, we had something else going on, but I have garlic going right here. Garlic tincture started. Today is the 28th and that is what I'm doing right there. So in a few weeks, I'm gonna do six weeks, I'm gonna take it out of here and I'm gonna put it into my little tincture bottles and I'll video that so y'all can see the whole process. But I'm so excited, it's so easy. It just takes time. Everything homeopathic, holistic takes time, but it's so worth it because it really gets down to the cure and it really gets down to the, the reason for the illness instead of putting your band-aid on it like a lot of new pharmaceutical stuff does, you know? That's it for today, guys. And I really hope that you learned something or inspired to go out and do it yourself and uh, make your own medicine.